everybody. Welcome to week seven of the Discord Football League. Obviously, we have this not on a Monday, but we're going to take it in a special Tuesday edition of Tuesday Night Football. We are going to kick off in the night turn of events with an absolute massacre. We are about to witness as the red names are going to get obliterated by the Florida Femboys here tonight. Femboys looking to go 6-1 tonight. Let's see if they can do it. Well, this is what I like to call the the awesome game femboys against red names This is going to be an easy. This is gonna be an easy prediction of who's gonna win this thing very obvious, but immediately you see Chad get tackled I'm running right in there Ready, break. Running straight at him Quarterback CEO number three on the field Goes to the side here pass it to Ryko. Ryko dodging but only gets in six yards and get very far with that one. If at all. The CEO going long here. Might not be the case. And instead it's an incomplete pass. Man, these people that show up to the red name games, they just they're just hoping and praying that they finally win one. Red names have not won a single game since we've started the third season. But tonight. Maybe not, might not be the night though. It's first great six yard catch by Curry. Obviously, you got the, the Fem Boys who are ranked pretty high in terms of the A group. There's no way in, in Jesus himself that the Red Names are going to beat the Fem Boys. Right now, it seems like they're just trying to keep the offense on themselves. We got inside run here. Thanks to Colt the Bolt, but he only gets in 10 yards for it. 12 yards, actually, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. The awesome quarterback passes it to Chad. Not very awesome because he got tackled by Greg Alford there. There we go. CEO going far here. Great pass in the middle, but incomplete for it. Nobody home there, despite the fact there was a guy wide open that he could have passed it to, but instead he did not catch it. Ready, break. And right now it's just the Femboys kind of just playing defense throughout the first half of this game. Red names are at third and 12. They got to get the first down, and they do so thanks to speed. First down with the 27 yard catches. Red Names might be getting a touchdown here. It'd be hilarious if, like, the next few games of the regular season, the Red Names just win. We'll see a long pass out to Curry. Great catch, though, for 20 yards. And they call a timeout with a minute and 28 left. Them boys, I guess they're just going to be receiving the ball for the second half. The Red Names, they can get a touchdown here. Go inside run and it's successful. Mosin with a three yard run for a touchdown. The Red Names will take the lead so far. But can they get the kick though? Watch out. Nope, absolutely not. That defense from the Red Names, thanks to Roderick Mitchell, was just non existent. And now, if them boys, it'd be funny if they just made a touchdown like the minute and 24 they have left. Here we go. Rusty Emanuel, wide receiver, returned for 19 yards. So far, currently in this game, Red Names have almost about 100 yards in total. Here we go. Jason Young, quarterback, passes it here. Incomplete pass, though, thanks to the defenders. Rain deflected the ball there, and it made sure that they lost some yards there. So Young once again inside run here to Nate Hudson Nate Hudson Joe just like that defenders nowhere in sight oh but they couldn't cover him in time though but he got 60 yards down the field no reason for them to call a timeout for this one they're showing that they can make a touchdown just that simple and now Jason Young defenders wide open though he can't get him and he gets a touchdown Jason Young with 20 yards. And the Femboys, this might be the 
turning point for them, despite the fact they haven't really been doing much during the first half other than playing defense. They're still confident in winning tonight. They're going for two, and it's successful. Charlie Rogers with two points on the scoreboard. It is now eight to six before halftime. The Red Names, they definitely still have an opportunity here to make a touchdown in the final seconds of the second quarter. Is it, is it probably going to happen? Probably not. Let's be honest here. This is the Red Names we're talking about. CEO passes it here to Chad and now Chad running this thing defenders trying to get him but he gets a first down Chad with nine seconds left on the clock though Two seconds actually but this will be the last play before halftime CEO looking to get a touchdown for the last of it interception though But it doesn't really matter because the femboys will be receiving the ball regardless during the second half Take this thing to halftime here. Gucci just had an amazing halftime performance. Incredible singing. Something about the cell cycle, I don't know. They're running now. They're running it here. Ready, what are they talking about? Rap shit. Okay, whatever. One, two. All right, let's see. Jason Young passes it here to Trent Corrales with 10 yards in the field, second and inches. They expected this thing to be a massacre so far throughout, throughout the beginning of this thing, but seems like they're pretty tied so far. The Fem boys could change that in a little bit. Pass there. Corrales not ready to get out here. 30, 40, gets tackled at 45. 57 yards in total. We fem one of the Femboy players last or got offensive defensive player of the week last week. No, it was not last week, my mistake. Oh, great tackle there though, but there was a defender there to stop him, but it got a first down. Really a move there. The young. We'll run it instead, but seems like it was unsuccessful. Thanks to Shizu. And with the Femboys at second and goal, they're losing some yards here. Look at Jason Young looking about throwing it far here. Oh, incomplete pass though. Thanks to Bife Weeder. First time we've seen Bife actually be actually do something around here. Around this team. And Femboys, I can't believe they can't even score a touchdown right now. Jason Young, think about going long here. There's his defender wide out in the open, though. Caught it just in time, thanks to Rusty Emanuel for a 12-yard catch. And now the Femboys will set up for an extra point. The kick this time. You know their defenders will not stop them. And they executed perfectly. The kick is good. And now Red Names will be receiving this thing. For the beginning of the fourth quarter. Chad, though, gets tackled out of 14. As we head to the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter. Oh, my God. What CEO got to do? Going for an inside run. Gets tackled. Oh, actually, no. That was their, it was their fullback he passed it to. Mr. Colt the Bolt. Mr. Colt Lightning. Inside run a Colt once again, and it seems like defender tried to stop him there, but he got near the 45. Brilliant move. 34 yards down the field. Oh, hello, Gucci. He loves cats. And dunking donuts. See, oh, oh my god. Just get first sack of the game, though, thanks to Paul Ziegler, and of course. Thought he was going to be an absolute massacre tonight, but it seems like that's not happening. Oh, we still won. How sad. The pass, though. Interception, though, thanks to Dan Ford there. Freaking stupid CEO threw the ball at the wrong player. Freaking colorblind. And now Femboys have possession of the ball here at the fourth quarter. Right at the 52. 
Here we go, pass to Nate Hudson. And just like that, Nate Hudson, not just so effortlessly, gets to the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> God damn, great, great play there for Nate Hudson. 121 yards in total for this thing. And now this is the point where Fem boys are just gonna murder them. Here we go, inside run. And I don't know how he missed that two-pointer there because of Coon. But somehow he did. And now Red Name's getting the ball again. Go for the onside kick. For what? Just stall the time right now. Oh my god, no. Chad gets obliterated over there. Did not work out so well in his favor. They got at the 25, though. The defense definitely putting in the pressure here. We'll see how passes it in the middle. And now Raiko's running this thing out near the 40. And they call a timeout with 27 seconds left. Red Names are about to score two touchdowns in the, in the two seconds we have left. Go going long here. Oh, great catch though, I believe, because of speed. He caught it right, at, right before he got tackled though. Now they're at the 26. They can still get a touchdown here, but it will not win them the game. Here we go, CEO. That's it on the middle once again. Ryko, though, gets tackled at the one yard line. 26 yard catch. With two seconds left, it's going to be the final play of the game. Let's go for an inside run for this one. We'll pass it out here. See, what did I just get done saying? All Ziggler stopped and made sure that did not happen. And the Femboys will take the win here tonight against the Red Names. Who would have ever guessed this outcome? The top division leaders are just absolutely obliterating the Red Names. Predictable outcome, honestly. Either, babe, uh, either way, big win for them. Here we go. Coming up next, we got Thunder Bay Economists. We got the Bikini Bottom Barnacles taking place here in this awesome matchup, of course. Economists are four and two. Barnacles are two and four. Pretty much scored them. Pretty much switched up between these two. Let's see who's gonna win this game. And apparently we're in Canada because it's snowing out here in the Economy Stadium. These guys are the Bikini Bottom Barnacles. They hate snow. Jackson, though, now Rhett has it to Kendall Cornell. Kendall Cornell jukes two guys there. Great tackle there. 20 yard run. Ready, break. Ready. And now Bikini Bottom Barnacles playing some defense. If there's one thing we know about their defense, is that they can absolutely obliterate. The Pickle Lake regards, but in this case, Economist might be a different, a different situation. Economist, one of the veteran teams of the DFL, bringing the fight to the Barnacle. Inside run here, Kendall Cornell, and another only 40-yard run. Didn't get very far with these. Jackson passes it shortly here, but it's an incomplete pass. Thanks to Charles Terry deflecting the ball there. Ready, Go Jackson. Am I going long? There's a guy wide open over there. You can pass it to and of course gets a touchdown. Terry McGrady with a 20-yard catch. It looked like it was offside, but I don't know. Must have been the, the coach's call. Now they're going for a two-point conversion here. Inside run to Cornell, though, gets tackled, but he gets at the end zone for two points. And the Economist will take the lead here against the Barnacles. It never snows in Bikini Bottom, except those, those Christmas episodes they have. We go Kelly, though, short pass here to Corwin Cates, and now Corwin Cates is just gone here. As soon as he got the ball, bro, just absolutely went with it. Corwin Cates, 61 yard run here from the Barnacles. Ready, Jesus. 
Literally their second play of the game tonight. And they're already at the 15. Going for a long pass here. And just like that with two plays on the playbook, they get a touchdown very effortlessly. And as they set up for the extra point. They get it. They absolutely can. The kick is good. Now we reach the second quarter of this thing. I have a feeling this is going to be a high scoring game. Come on, Jigs it though. They go passing out to McGrady. McGrady though gets planted. Only ran 20 yards. Ready, break. Jackson Cornell Cornell no I don't know what he was trying to do there he's trying to show off a little bit trying to juke so many guys there but obviously that did not work out so well in his favor I don't know what he was trying to do there Rio runs it here but he gets it at the first down though but he didn't get, didn't get very far Jackson. Short pass to Kendall Cornell. Kendall Cornell. The fumble, though. But he recovered it. Economist. That was a very close call. It's a very rare instance that the opposing team gets the fumble. But they receive it there. But seems like that was not the case. We're going to running it here. Jake Logan, though, gets tackled out 24. Does the Economist call for a timeout here. Seems like they get a first down now, and now Jake Logan running it out here, gonna showboat a little bit as he gets a touchdown, runs this 43. And for the kick here, oh, incomplete though, thanks to the Barnacles. Brett Branch stopped them there. Made sure nothing happened. Now they go for the kick. Didn't get very far with that one. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Set. Here we go. Joe Kelly, quarterback of the Bikini Bottom Barnacles, going for a pass here. The side, and they call a timeout with 11 seconds left on the clock. Ready, break. Ready. Be the last play of the game before halftime. Joe Kelly's gonna take that opportunity to run this thing by himself. Here we go at the 30. Oh, but gets tackled at 42. No worries for them because they will still be receiving the ball during the third quarter. Second half of this game as economists take the lead 14 to 7 so far in this thing. And now it's even snowing, it's snowing even worse now. It's gonna be hard for these guys to walk. Hell, even run. The London, they'll try to run it here. You see them kind of going a little bit slower. Look at this goddamn snow. Ready, really taking a toll on them. Right, Joe Kelly passed it. Quick pass to Corwin Cates, but did not get very much done with that one. Kelly. For a short pass here. Jason Smith and Jason Smith get planted. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Set. Hut, hut. Kelly, another short pass to London, and it seems like that's what they're going to be doing for the rest of this thing. The short passes, try not to go very far with these, Ready, with these plays. Especially in this in these weather conditions right now. Kelly, long pass out to Mike Wheeler. Mike Wheeler though gets absolutely rock. But he gets 24 then. Ready, break! Razor, razor! Set! 
We got the pass here though. Oh my god though, that, this man dived for the ball. God damn. It's just a football game, bro. Chill. Here we go, Joe Kelly. We got a touchdown here in the third quarter. Oh, but get planted seven yards in though. We got a first down. Joe Kelly wants to get past to McLean there. Don't get much done there. Ready, this MF name McLean. But Joe Kelly, he don't care about that. He only care about getting his team to victory. And that's exactly what they need to do, third and short. They're literally right at the five. We go past the Mike Wheeler. Mike Wheeler though gets planted, and this thing's gonna go to a fourth down. It seems the Barnacles call for a timeout for a first and goal. Actually, never mind. Barnacles can get a touchdown here. It's all about cooperating here, and just like that, Mike Wheeler with the touchdown for the team. Barnacles have an opportunity to tie this thing. At least they're going for two to maintain the lead by one point. Great catch, though, and it's going to be a touchdown for Mike Wheeler once again. As now he is in the lead for the team. The Barnacles look seemed like they were going to win this thing by one point. To kick this out on the field. Ready, now, if you're the economist, I mean, just... Gotta go for a field goal, anything possible to break up that one, that one point lead. Not they're gonna brag about it all night and of course Troy Devlin, great catch there at 26. 48. Jackson. Calculate here and of course an incomplete pass, the poor referee got tackled over there. Bruh. Bro did not deserve this punishment. Here we go. Jackson out on the pass there. 12 yards. Here we go. The pass there and of course gets planted. And the Economist call for the timeout. With 34 seconds left, the Economist definitely feeling the pressure here. Pass, it seems like it was completed by Terry McGrady. Taking things one small step at a time. Jackson pad. Oh my god, though. Great catch there. This man dove, but he got at the one yard line. And the economists look to win this game with the final three seconds. Can they do it though? Is the question. Here we go. Jackson to throw a touchdown win, and he does. Kendall Cornell wins it for the economists. And now they're just doing an extra point for the fun of it. And they're going for two just to rub it in the Barnacles face unsuccessful though But it does not matter because the economists get the win here tonight Against the bikini bottom Barnacles with 20 to 15 big win for them here tonight in their home stadium Here we go coming up next the Chicago Washington very awesome team Literally, they suck now against the Tanzania Waka Talk has taken place here tonight in the A group matchup. Who will win this game? And now they go and set up for the kick. Great one at that. He's out on the field. Chicago, Washington, loving to play hometown here tonight. And made a miscalculation there. We'll see what they can do. Ready, break! See what the Washington team are capable of. And 
that's exactly what they're capable of. They just took an L. Maybe not very easily tonight. Wakataka's defeated the Wolves the other week, and now could do the same with the Washington team if Wayne Middleton catches it out 25 yards. Okay, Chicago, Washington. What happened? And now it's just claws and running out here. 18 yards though. Riddle me this, Batman. How can he win this thing? How can they do it? Here we go. Inside run was unsuccessful. Did not work out so well. for a pass here. Great one at that. Touchdown by Edwin Jackson. It's good. It's awesome. It's incredible. It's amazing. Incredible moment in football history. Oh, but of course we stop. Thanks to Brian Griffin. Famous family guy character. He's finally doing something around here. Thank goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, now let's see what he's capable of out here. This tackle gets juke. Didn't get much done. If at all. Ready, break. Ready. Black 35. Go. Mike Swan, a great pass out there, but maybe not so great because it was deflected by AC Kennedy. We go another one. This time we got it there. And Spielman got 20, 28 yards there. Good promising play. You're going to Ronnie Lonnie Lamont, though. We know what Lonnie Lamont is capable of in terms of the DFL, one of the star players of this team. Not so well for them right now, but Ready, getting close to a touchdown. We're glancing though, and it's also snowing out here. Ready, good, good condition to play out here. Here we go now, Lonnie Lamont, just like that, bro, just, just hitting the Fortnite emotes for a 10 yard run. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. Hut, hut. Oh my god, they went for an inside run, unsuccessful though. By Leland Sanders. And of course, both of these teams missed the two point conversion, and that's why they will stay tied. They're going to go for a pass, and now Turner. Good pass there, and it gets close. Second and short. Ready, break. Ready. Chicago, Washington would be awesome on Freddy Five Night. Jason Turner passes it to Wayne Middleton. 15 yard catch. Here we go. Turner. Another pass to Dexter Payton in the first 14 yards. Not going so well right now. Here we go, Turner. Pass to Hester. Jason Turner once again. A great long pass there to Dexter Payton. 
And that could have been disastrous if he just kept taunting right before the end zone. But he, they may, he managed to get there though. Go kick there and it's gonna be good thanks to that, that strong defense and offense and thingy majigs. Lonnie Lamont now gonna do his thing out here. Jukeson though. He only got five yards. Where's the lie? Here we go. Pass though. For 26 yards. Very awesome. Very cool. Very inspirational. Very life changing. Whatever you want to call it. And now it seems like Brave Gabe Polk got to get out into the end zone. We've only got 38. So we reach into halftime. Now this thing's 13 to 6. Washington will get the lead so far. As the Waka Takas will be receiving the ball here on the second half. And gets planted. Gets absolutely rocked. Ready, break. Ready. Hut, hut. Here we go, Lonnie Lamont. Now, Lonnie Lamont gonna do his thing here. 20, 30, 40. Defenders took him literally like 60 yards to get the guy. Pass it to Gabe Polk. Now Gabe Polk here, touchdown for a 19-yard catch. And now this thing's going to be almost tied unless they go for a two-pointer. They're going to go for the kick instead. Seems like they're going to take things safer with that kick. And it's going to be good now. Wakataka's and the Washington team keep this thing even. Pass. I'm trying to juke him out here. Obviously, it did not work well for them, but what do you know? What do you know? We're gonna running it here. Jay Hester. Jay Hester gonna do his thing now. But he gets planted. He gets rocked for 14 yards. Awesome 14 yards at that. Here we go, Jason Turner throwing it out on the field, but immediately gets speared out of his shoes there. For John Clausen, he's still got to play. Here we go, Jason Turner, another short pass, wide open into the touchdown for the Washington team, thanks to Edwin Jackson. We're gonna go for the kick, and it's gonna be good. The Washington team will take the lead so far in this game with only 17 seconds in the third quarter. We still got a lot more though. Lamont this time. It didn't look like he did so well there. We're running here. Lonnie Lamont now. Lonnie Lamont running this thing. 20, 30, 40 yards for the touchdown. Actually, no, not for the touchdown. Jesus Christ, we're getting way too ahead of ourselves. Ready, break. What can they do with this extra time? What will they do with this extra time? Lonnie Lamont, though, 
He's gonna get near the end zone. That's what he's gonna do. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Here we go. Big Swan has to hear short pass though to Corey Cooper. He gets a touchdown for the Waka Tacos, and they're just gonna keep this thing very tied for this Ready, game, aren't they? Right. Been very close throughout so far throughout this game. And the kick is gonna be good. They got plenty of time in the world. They get up Chicago. It's snowing out here in Chicago, apparently in November. The Jackson's running it out here for the team. Ready, break. 20, 23 yards up there. Thinks they are very far. Pass there. Or the tackle second and short. Ready, break. They gonna crack a toe out of here. Here we go. Washington. They can win this thing. They definitely have the opportunity to do so. Can they? Will they though is the question. Is the question we're all wondering. They're literally like near the 50. Going long here for a long pass though. Kawain Middleton caught it out on the field for 52. And that's going to get them closer to the end zone. And they call a timeout to reserve the moments that they have right now. Here we go, Jason Turner. Short pass here to Jay Hester. For the touchdown, Washington looks like they're going to win the, the game so far. But who knows? Anything is possible at this rate. We got two-point conversion. Jason Turner passes it here. Incomplete, though. Got stopped. He's had 271 yards in total for this game. Very impressive. But obviously, they got to stall the time. They got 44 seconds left. That missed two-point conversion could backfire them. They'll get it here. Ready, no, right. this is a tough call. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Pass here to Corey Cooper. He gets rocked. He gets blanked. It's bamboozled. Ready, right. Here we go, Mike Swad. Short pass, but to get a Cooper. They're gonna keep depending on Cooper for this thing. They're gonna take things very nice and simple with them. Here we go, another inside run to Lonnie Lamont. The Lonnie Lamont, can he get the touchdown with 40, 50 yards? And he does, Lonnie Lamont. Possibly saving the team here tonight. If they can get the extra point, they will win this thing. They're going for the kick. If they can land it, they will win it. Oh, and they do. The Wakatakas win tonight with the game-winning field goal here with seven seconds left on the clock. What are these guys going to do at this point? Running right in here, Jackson. Gets rocked. And that's going to be the end of the game, folks. The Wakatakas win here tonight from a game winning field goal against the Chicago Washington. And coming up next, this one's going to be an interesting game to watch here tonight as the two top B division leaders will go one on one here tonight as the Netherlands Stone to Skolko is the first place team taking on the Latvia Eagles. The second place team, one of these teams, will end up being number one in their ranking. Of course, they are both, their coaches are a part of the colonizers faction and will hold their votes for it too. Let's see how this game's gonna turn out. Let's go, this is so awesome, this is so incredible, this is so amazing. And RJ Logan seems like he's gonna kick things off to start it here. Gets rocked, gets planted, gets obliterated by the opposition. Right. 
Force gets sacked by Gerald McMillan. Already it seems like they're not doing so well in this Ready thing. We go McGrady. Go for a short pass here. It's only like about 10 yards there, but they got something, all right. Ready, got the 20 dot. An inside run there. RJ Logan gonna take this thing closer to the end zone, but not enough for a touchdown. They still got a long way to go if they won't get some progress done. If they won't get some progress done. Go tackled, of course. Ryan McGrady, though. Didn't get very far with that one. 12 yards though. Pass though, god damn, bro got knocked out of his shoes. Derek Foster just speared the man to the next planet. Speared him to the next week. Jesus. Here we go, McGuire though. We play some strong defense tonight. Doing so well so far during this game. There we go, McGuire. Good pass here, and it gets absolutely knocked out there. No injuries so far. I think there's not been any injuries throughout the season. We're just that built different. We're just that amazing of a of a football league. Going for the kick. Oh, it was almost incomplete, but Sylvester Rick still managed to get it in. Great play there. And they're gonna go out on the field. And gets rocked, got tackled. Ready, fight! Razor, razor! Doing so well for this thing. And the Wayne Bannister, star quarterback of the lot via Eagles, throwing it on the field. He caught it on the side though for 18 yards. Great catch there. Ready, fight! Really in 20 even. We go going for an inside run. Unsuccessful though. At second and inches. We go Wayne Bannister. Thinking about going long here. Instead he passes it across the tight end. 12 yards. Interesting, interesting scenario. Interesting, wacky turn of events. Wayne Bannister, another pass out of the field and the inside for a touchdown thanks to Ty Lawrence. And it seems like the Lavia Eagles will be taking the lead so far. We're going for the kick and that one is gonna be good. That's how the Eagles will take the lead for this game. Wonder how the situation will turn out. Hope nothing wacky happens. Ready, break! Razor, razor! Here we go. McGrady, now McGrady the quarterback running it out here. Oh, but got stopped there by a defender. 22 yard run and they're gonna call for a timeout here 16 seconds left on the clock before we hit the halftime and the Stolfos are gonna make sure to not waste this time Short pass into the first down I believe it was and it seems like it is and they're going for another one going for another play Here we go, it seems like McGrady taking a sweet time there. Interception by McNeil. And just like that, McGrady, I don't know what this man was thinking. But it did not work out for him. As 
we head to halftime now, this thing will be seven to three. And why are these dogs barking? Why are these dogs loose? Well, we need these shoes. Oh my god. He got speared. This man got speared out of his goddamn feet. Yep, seems like Wayne Bannister going for another pass here to Ty Lawrence and now gets near the 40 for 25 yards. Really use a an estrogen burger for that one to fuel them up. Inside run. Rant Spielman though did not get much there. If at all. Did not get anything, but his mad his ass is not playing. We go Wayne Bannister, another pass on the inside, and of course, every time they go for those plays, it you know pretty much always works out for them. Now we're going to Wayne Bannister. What kind of play is he going to think about here? Inside run, just like that. Grant Spielman gets a touchdown for the Eagles. 13 to 3 so far in this thing. Astolfo's unable to just score a touchdown so far. They made a field goal earlier, but that was pretty much it. Now Eagles setting up for another kick. And that one's good. Good move there. We're going for the kick. The awesome kick. The amazing kick. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. A little short pass here. But RJ Logan didn't get much done there. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Running it here. Tackle. By Sharice Parker. This MF name Sharice Parker. What are he gonna do though? What is McGrady gonna do? He's gonna pass it to Isaac Allen for only eight yards. That's what he's gonna do. We're going for the kick, and that was their fourth down. And they don't want to risk anything, else, so they're just going to set up a kick. Well, they're at the fourth quarter of this thing. I very much doubt that the Astolfos could win here tonight. But who knows? An interesting situation now. Going for the inside run on Grant Steelman. He got a first down there. Not enough. Inside run once again. It seems like that's what the Eagles are trying to do here. Continuous inside runs, but it's not working out so well. Here we go, and now Wayne Bannister running this thing out on the field. Going for the 20 28, though. I got a good amount there. Ready, I won't right. even lie. Ready. We got a minute and ten left. Oh, it's a fumble though, and it seems like it's a turnover now. Astolfo's got the ball. Lafayette Eagles, as soon as they were going to make another touchdown, the Astolfos. They could still recover. Actually, no, never mind. They cannot recover here. Who knows, though? Going for the pass here. A little bit, a little bit. Wide receiver. Ready to get out 30 yards. Now this is the point of the game where the Stolfos, they got to hurry it up here. Here we go. Brady passes it here. Gets tackled. Didn't get much done. Ready, break. Ready. Here we go. McGrady. Pass here to the middle by McCaffrey. McCaffrey with a touchdown to the Astolfos. 
for 38 yards. They're now setting up for the extra point. This thing's at 28 seconds left. The Astolfos looking to make this 14 and 11. Incomplete pass though. Got stopped there. Does not look good. so good for him right now. Here we go. 26 seconds, honestly, at this point. Eagles are just going to take their time now. They know they got this in the bag. They know if they, as long as they don't throw another interception, they should be okay. Here we go. Wayne Bannister, another short pass. Not a short pass, but he got a pretty good 18-yard throw. 18-yard catch. Here we go, Bannister. Seems like in this case, he didn't want to do so much there, but instead he's going to finish off the game here. Is the Latvia Eagles win tonight against the Netherlands Stone to Stolfos, 14 to 9. Here we go, coming up next, two teams that have just been lacking around here in terms of the DFL season. The Atlanta Boonies. The Gary Pickle faces both of these teams are two and four. One of them will be three and four. The other one will be two and five, which is disastrous for them. Let's see which one of these teams are going to take the W and which one will take the L. Oh, look, it's not snowing anymore. Awesome. So cool. Then again, it does not snow in it. Uh, Atlanta. There ain't shit to do in Atlanta. Other than get shot. Why well, they're gonna have a friendly competition of football here tonight? Here we go, Joe Cotton. Think about it, trying to calculate, bro. Just throw the damn ball. Here we go, pass it to Dan Dickey though for 22 yards. It took him that long just to throw a damn football. His ass is not playing quarterback. Instead, Joe Cotton. Instead, he's going to take matters into his own hands. He's not going to pass it to anybody, and he's just going to run this thing 20, 30, 36 yards on the field. Great play here. As long as they can keep up that momentum, they can sure as hell win the game. Here we go, Joe Cotton. Think about it. Calculating, going for a high pass here, though it was deflected. It was like two D3 defenders stopping him. There was no way in hell he was going to get him there. Hard to say, though. And Joe Cotton. And for another long pass. This time, Dan Dickey was wide open, and he got a touchdown for the team. Now I guess they're going to go for an extra point now. Atlanta Budius. Kindle. For the kick, and it's good. So awesome. Now, it will be the Gary Pickle faces who will be getting the ball now. Near the 20. Here we go. Hey, Tucker, though, gets juking him there. Oh, my God. And now he's running this thing out in the middle of the field. He got 46 yards there. He got a good amount of distance. Two seconds in the first quarter. And Tay Tucker here. We're going to go for a short pass here. Tariq Pounds, only 11 yards. What they got in store for us in the second quarter? What are they going to do? What could they possibly do? They're going for a run, though. It seems like it was not first down, but it was second in inches. Getting closer and closer to the end zone. Well, Tucker, once again. We got an inside run, but instead going for another short pass. Maybe going long here. Go great pass here. Oh, and he got tackled, but it was good enough for a touchdown. Tavian Lang with 12-yard catch. 
Seems like this thing could be tied if they make the kick here. And it is good. And the game will be tied as the Atlanta Booties will be receiving the ball next year. A minute and 28 to go. They are running it now. And they get rocked. Ready, break! Another run though, but didn't get much done there. Ready, break. Yeah. Go, Cotton passes it to Dan Dickey. Dan Dickey once again might be the star player of the Atlanta Booty is right. I juked two guys there, but could not get the third one. Oh, a good amount of attack there. Ready, break. Here we go, another short pass. Rob Bender, Rob Bender running this thing here. Defense coverage for a touchdown as this thing is now 13 to 7 before halftime. Because now they prepare for this for this kick here. Oh, maybe a not. It seems like they were going for a two-point. That is my mistake. Marshall Allen did stop them though. Which gives them an open advantage. Go out here. I want to touch back though. Ready, break. Down. Set. Hut, hut. The run here, and it seems like Tate Tucker, the quarterback, running 47 yards on the field. The man is tired of just passing the ball. He's going to take matters into his own hands. Ready, break. I'm tired of y'all playing around here. We got Tucker. Short pass here to Brandon. We're eight yards though. Going closer and closer to that end zone. We reach halftime now with Atlanta Booty is taking the lead against the Gary Pickle faces with 13 to 7. This game is far from over though. Still plenty more than anybody could still win this thing. Running it here, jukes that guy, but got planted there. Getting near the 20. Ready, break! Right, one, two! Right, one, two! Hut, hut! Here we go once again, though. Tay Tucker, quarterback, taking matters into his own hands for 51. 53 yards. it once again to Brandon though. I think he's passing it to the same two guys every time. Here we go Tucker. Time going for an inside run. Oh, but he got overconfident there. He thought he could get a touchdown. He got farther out from the previous play, but that one didn't work. Go take Tucker. First and goal. There's no way in hell they can mess this up. Oh my god, a bit of miscalculation there from the middle. They could not get a touchdown though. Inside run though, but this time it was good. Hank Jackson got a touchdown for the team here. Pickle faces now setting up for the kick to take the lead by one point. Can they do it though? They do. They are now in the lead here by one point. Same situation with the Washington team and the Wakatakas earlier. But at this point, who knows? And for a run here, Rob Bender though jukes him. Jukes him again at 33. Here we go. 
Joe Cotton running it out here. Defense nowhere in sight. Defense trying to cover him. He got 41 there. What is this team doing? Their ass is not playing. Ready, break. Here we go, and it Rob Bender once again, just like that, finding a weak spot in the Pickle Faces defense, and they got a touchdown thanks to it. Now they will set up for the two point conversion here, going for the run defense, nowhere in sight, and they take the lead once again, back and forth between these two teams so far. With a minute and 49 left. Pickle Faces definitely can still win this thing. All they would need is a touchdown and to get two points to win it by one point. It's not going to be an easy challenge. Here we go. Think about going long, maybe. No, Tucker running it, taking things into his own hands here. Defense, though, got him, but he got first down. Tucker going long here this time Brett Brandon caught it out 38 yards and that's where their their playbook comes into play I mean guys love playing the long game they love making some long passes and it's working out for them right now here we go Tucker going for a pass to Brandon incomplete actually no it was not incomplete yeah it wasn't complete because Alonzo Mays deflected it Tucker, another short pass to the key lane here. And Darren, Bo David Boren, make sure that did not happen. Now the Bootyas defense are definitely catching up here. They're starting to realize, they're starting to find, starting to find the groove of the offensive team. They're getting a lot more done now. Now they're in the fourth. Things do not look good here. If they do not get past that yellow line, it will be a turnover. Hey, Tucker going for the long pass here, but a touchdown by Brett Brandon. Great play here. And now they could either make the decision to tie this thing or win by one point. Instead, it seems like they want to take things into overtime, but it was unsuccessful. Nate Jones, though. Bruh. Pickle faces were close to victory. But at the end of the day, the Atlanta Bootyists are going to look like they're going to win this thing by one, though. 40 seconds left on the clock. Now, honestly, if I were them, I'd just waste the time as much as possible. Try not to throw any more of these balls and risk any, you know, interceptions. Pickle faces have no timeouts left. They wasted them all earlier. And he got sacked there. Maybe there is a possibility of the Pickle faces winning. That would require getting a safety and pushing them back all the way to their own end zone. Never has happened in DFL history, but it's definitely a possibility. And he got rocked once again. Chucky Sexton made him lose three yards. With two seconds left in the game. Barn, goddamn Elena Booty is going for the inside run. He gets tackled. And that's exactly what they needed to do. Waste up the last two seconds as they get the win tonight against the Gary Pickle Faces. With 21 to 20. Very close game, but at the end of the day, they miraculously get the win. And coming up next, we probably got two of the worst DFL teams in the DFL. It is the Austin Hackers. It is the Washington Ass Whites here in this matchup. Both of these teams actually hackers at the three and three record ass by like two and four similar to the movies and pickle faces tonight. Let's see how they can fare here one on one. It is so awesome to be here tonight in Austin, Texas. It's very awesome, very cool. We hit the post and it was a touchback there. Ready, break! Here 
Here we go. And now it seems like Darren Randall running it out here. 20, 30, 40, 57 yards for the beginning of this thing. Maybe that's how they will dominate this game. Who knows? Ready, break. Great catch though for second third game here by Shelton Shed. Six Shelton Seth or whatever. I don't know what you're gonna call this man. It's working. We got planted. We got tackled by Ty Biggs. That's why he's making sure that's nothing's gonna happen here. Let's throw a very far out kick. Field. This MF name Warfield here. Ready, break. Or got a goofy ass name. He uh -huh. passes it out to the field and not a great catch though. Stevens short pass here inside run from Joe Paris and at Joe Paris the fullback getting close to the end zone for the touchdown 52 good play here the kick and that one's good Lester Owens, the quarterback, gonna take the matter into his hands. 64 yards down the field. Good run here by the quarterback. And that's the case with a lot of these players. I mean, gonna take his time. He's going for a juke there, and he got it for a touchdown. Great play by Darren Randall. It's a great. Great execution. And we got the kick. The kick is good. We head to the second quarter of this thing now. The catch by Warfield means a little bit, you know, it's kind of slow pace right now. I don't know what would be up with him. Maybe ate a little bit too much earlier tonight, and now he's paying the consequences of this thing. Look at Ryan Stevens running it out here. Defenders trying to cover him. But he got out 28. Interesting turn of events in this game. Into Stevens inside run of Edwards didn't get very much done there. Did not do very far. Ready, break. Fight one, two. Fight one, two. His ass is not playing for Mike Lindsay, though, when they call a timeout there. Ready, break. We're running it here, Ryan Stevens, though. That guy could not save him for the life of it. Ready, break. Fight one, two. Fight one, two. Hut, hut. You going for the run? Don't do much there. Ready, break. Ryan Stevens, star quarterback of the Washington Asswives, trying to go in the middle. Joe Paris, pro is acting like he just did an incredible run. He only ran like a, a, a six yards. Did nothing there. 
It's the thought it counts, I guess, for this team. Stevens, another pass here up the side, and Joe Paris tried to get close there, but it was not good enough. We got near the end zone, though. They're getting closer. Ready, Swipes likes to play their games, you know. Be short paced. Keeping things to their advantage, but got stopped thanks to Kel Kelvin Willis. Bruh. I don't know what these guys are doing here, but it looks like the Austin Hackers are going to take the lead 13 to 7 before the end of this game as we head to halftime. Yeah, stand your ass up, Austin. They'll let the Washington asswives with this. We only got 19 there. Most of these kicks are like 16. They're trying to go for an inside run, though. Defenders nowhere in sight to cover him except when he's out on the 40. 41 yard run. Good move here. Stevens and go for a pass here. They see Joe Paris. Go Paris though. First down. 22 yard catch. Oh, Stevens thinking about it here. Try to go for a pass. Was incomplete. Got dropped. There's like three defenders there. There was no way in hell he was going to catch that. And at least successfully. Pass. And of course he juked out one guy there, but didn't get much done. Ready, break. We're going for the run though. This time defenders, none. Paris, six points. One more, who knows. They're going for two instead. They want to take a good big lead in here. Ass swipes there when I don't know. Oh my God, for a split second, it looked like he was going to run out on the field. That was a scary situation for the Washington ass swipes. If their goddamn player would have ran offside out of bounds, literally when the goddamn end zone is right there. Luckily, that did not happen. We do not got to worry about that. Two. Well, what the what the Austin Hackers do gotta worry about is getting a touchdown here past the Corey Cooper. We're at the middle of the field. Three sec two seconds left in the third quarter. Running it here. Got tackled. Ass swipes mostly they gotta cover their defense right now. Buster Owens, he cannot just keep running the, this ball here by himself. He's going to depend on his teammates. And now Johnson running it out here. 20, 30, got tackled with 34. We are at the fourth quarter of this thing now, it seems. Owens, no pass in the middle, and a great pass to Shelton Seth. I don't even want to use the the H there anymore. But he got a touchdown, I will say that. Carry. Oh my god, another incomplete though from Ty Biggs. Ass swipes can definitely stop them here. But the Austin Hackers. Gotta just use their defense right now. Run by Warfield into the 20. Another run here. Defender try to cover him. Nice cover from the defense, but that tackle near the 50, it seems, or at least close to the middle. Ready, break. Razor, razor. No ass swipes. 
the offense from Ryan Stevens, quarterback. Has to get out to the field, but it, it was deflected by Bo Alexander. It seems like he's stopping, but nothing happened. Very awesome moment. Go, Stevens thinking about it. Going for a short pass to Sharp there from the tight end. Ready, break. Ready. Here we go, Stevens going out here, and it seems like it's another deflected pass from Bo Alexander again. Bro is just doesn't even have to move and he's getting them. And now the Washington asswipes. They gotta get to the first down here or else it will be a turnover. Short pass to Rogers. Rogers though covers him there for first. They got close enough and they call a touchdown to save him here. Stevens once again on this short pass, and it seems like that's just what they keep on doing. They need to stop doing that. Right. Ready, right. Mike, one, two. Mike, one, two. Hut, hut. Stevens once again going for a pass. Incomplete, at least deflected by Asher Jones. I don't know what the Washington, the goddamn Washington ass wipes are doing right now. I keep saying that you can't get confused with the Washington team. There's two Washingtons in the BFL. Here we go. Stevens passed it out on the field. Seems like Bowers caught it there. Four nine yards. And that's going to be the end of the game, folks. With the goddamn Austin Hackers winning tonight against the Washington Asswipes 19 to 15. Here we go. Coming up next, my personal favorite, the awesome game between the Klondike Wolves against the Lexington Minutemen. Obviously, this might be considered one of the more anticipated games of the season, but tonight it will be taking place here. Which one of these teams will get the W? Isn't it fairly obvious my Wolves will win this thing? Because we're so awesome. We're playing home stadium too. I mean... It's just a deciding factor that we are so good. We will win. There is no exceptions. We strive for nothing more than success. That's why I'm a Klondike Wolves employer. Isaiah Brooks, our star quarterback, going out long here to Derek Bowman. A 30-yard catch, and we're going to take this thing very quickly, aren't we? Go Brooks. Go passing to Bill Solomon. Bill Solomon juking him out here. Bill Solomon out running out running the defenders here. Oh my god though. He did outrun the defenders for 46 yard run here. Of course Wolves the only L they've taken the season was to the walk of Takas the other week. And tonight maybe this might be a, a bye week for them so to speak. The kick is good now. Wolves will take the lead so far with a minute and 11. With their star player of the Lexington Minutemen, uh, Steve Swift, obviously. Maybe he's got something else to say, but who knows how he can fare against their defenders. Who knows? They're really depending on just that guy, Lester Alexander, now running it out here. Defense covering him. Up. Wolves defense definitely gotten better now. If I do say so myself. That's why they've been ranked pretty high in terms of the playoffs. So passes it inside run to Steve Swift. Steve Swift trying to juke him there. Yeah, first down though. Good 11 yard run. Right, pass another short run to Steve Swift, and now Steve Swift outrunning the defenders 30, 40 yards into the touchdown. Good move here for Steve Swift. The inside runs will definitely be how they get some touchdowns here. Minutemen looking to give the Wolves another L in a row. Chuck Johnson passes here to Steve Swift, but got stopped by Mike Thomas. for a kick out on the field. Good tackle though. Ready, break. Mike, one, two. Mike, one, two. Hut, hut. 
Well, we'll run here. Who's the suspect? Derek Bowman, Derek Bowman, juking him out here. Or first down. Ready, right. Set. Hut, hut. This is not playing football. Here we go, juke him here. Now Roger Gore, Roger Gore doing his thing. Didn't get his thing enough, though. Touchdown, that's the Derek Bowman. So awesome. A kick, and it's good. Dominating, that's what we're doing. Destroying those little minute boys. And this is not what I had planned, but a defender there got him though. So Rod Washington, 38 yards. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. We go run here now. Mr. Alexander could not get a touchdown, but he got a first. Ready, break. Right, one, two. Right, one, two. Hut, hut. Going for the run, though, got absolutely speared. For the kick, and this one's good. The Minutemen finally get some points down. Here. Not much, at least, but of course, you go to halftime. Wolves 14, Minutemen 9. Here we go. Gonna run here. He gonna run. Let's see, 19 in here with a minute 54 on the third. Chuck Johnson passing to Steve Swift, and my goodness, Steve Swift cannot get anything done around here. He's terrible. We're against us. That's Tim Park, 10 times better. I don't even care if he's not Steve even the same Swift position. Steve Swift off. Oh, God, here we go. Oh, no, he is the same. Is Steve Swift, Swift the quarterback? He's a running back. Honor Mund, not the same as Phil Farr. I was just Phil Farr, Tim Farr. Steve Swift, or quarterbacks, the ones that run it. Now, Steve Swift is running now. Here we go, defense. Can they cover him? It looks like they did not, though. What is number 88 doing here? We could have at least taken the, the bullet. But nah. He's too busy protecting himself. Walter. Whoa. Whoa. The EO's not going to like that. Walter Waters. You need to change his last game to white, please. I'm begging you, please. 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 I don't think so. Going for a run now. Chuck Johnson, quarterback, Your running defense it here is for a touchdown for the Lexington Minutemen, and now they will take the lead here. It's only a matter of time. I actually hope you lose because it's better for me. I don't even, I don't even care. 
Nah. I need to win here tonight. Well, who knows? That mm. depends if you do beat the Lego man. Nice tackle there by Shane Rose. We're gonna beat the Lego men so hard they're gonna die. Who cares about that one? Femboys and Lego men is the big game right now. I, I don't care because I'm I'm better. Self-inflated ego. He's got a self-inflated ego. I gotta win a fictional oh football game. Oh my god, though, and now Bill Solomon. Can you imagine that this man runs out 50, 60, 79 yards oh on my the god. field? God damn. Bill Solomon, is a, is, Bill Solomon is a tank out there. Ain't nobody can stop this man. I'm playing cookie clicker. Who cares? I'm watching Bill Solomon do his thing. And Dexter Cox with two points on the scoreboard. 15 to 22 <laughs> so far. <laughs> Cox. was like 12. He laughs at dick jokes. Here we go. That, yeah, it's pretty funny. Oh. No. You. Well, you're going to get destroyed by him. Ready, break. Razor, razor. Now, watch this man choke. The Sergio Salam said, I don't think so. Love me some Sergio Salon. A run here. Incomplete though. We got second and short. A minute and 17 left in the fourth quarter. Minutemen can definitely still win this thing, but it's so favorable for them right now. Juan Lee with an 11 yard catch, and they call a timeout here. With Chuck Johnson going to the middle here to Juan Lee. Didn't get much done there, though. Ready, break. Makes sense. Like one, two. Like one, two. Hut, hut. And Chuck Johnson out passing to Lester Alexander. Got at the 20, though. 21 yard pass. 42 seconds left. If they do manage to get a touchdown with two points. They will win the game by one, one though, and it seems like the defense has some Nelson on. They got other players. We'll check Johnson. Another short pass here to Chris Boren. Got tackled though. Three seconds left though. Minutemen can still definitely win the game here. But Wolf's defense gotta play it strong strong here. Here we go. Chuck Johnson. Can he do it? Out to the field. Oh my god, deflected pass. Let's go. Tom Rose with a huge W. The Wolves defeating the Lexington Minutemen. The worst no team in the DFL. Mm, isn't that Sweden's team besides the Red Nims? Absolutely destroyed them tonight as we keep the momentum going. It's like that time we lost last week. Here we go. Coming up next, we got two teams that are polar opposites in terms of the scoreboard. We got the goddamn Dallas Cataphracts who cannot win a game for the better part of the next seven months. So the teams are there two and four against the loaded diapers who are four and two. Obviously, scoreboards are switched up. If there's anything we've seen from earlier tonight, the Eagles got their win. Or Rikos team. Rikos team is doing as, as weirdly good. Curry, says Mobzilla. That I did say that. Here we go. The McDonald's team. Who gonna win this? The Lamicky team. Oh my god. We got 25 yards though. Did absolutely nothing without him. This inside went to Dustin Coleman. Dustin Coleman running this. Oh my here. goodness. Dustin Coleman, obviously, he is a star player of the Cataphracts. That was something. For 64 yards. Ready, 
The stats look amazing on the Cataphract so far, despite the fact they literally just started. Despite their 79 overall. Inside for the run, and Dustin Coleman, just like that, he got a touchdown for the team. Very amazing. Bro wasted no time at all. Another inside run, this time for a two. James Hester. That's eight points on the scoreboard as the Dallas Cataphracts will be taking the lead so far. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, it's way... I think we're like halfway through the season so far. But from what we've seen from this thing is that, you know, Loaded Diapers, they're doing good from the first half and now it seems like they're struggling. They got to pick up some momentum again. Gotta juke him out there though, and now you see Andrew Beck, the running back, taking things into his own hands. And he gets the touchdown just like that with 76 yards out on the field. Wow. Good play there. As they set up for the extra point. And I just broke my the handle of my water bottle. Very awesome. And the goddamn thing got the fuck incredible. Rayleigh Lloyd just made sure nothing happened there. Made sure nothing wacky happened. But something did happen. Coleman? I see Coleman just trying to do some play or something. Is it working? Ready, break. I don't think it is. Going for a run. Look at him here. Nothing there. Nick Coleman got 18 yards. Ready, break. Did he though? I don't think so. Now I cannot open this thing for the better part of this. Put in Clarence Banks over here. Ready, break. Ready. Oh, put this thing back. Right. Already second quarter. And this thing's Ready, eight to break. six. Ready, Passing it out to the side of the field here. That's something. Ready, break. Ready, I'm back. No, you're not. Neither what? is Dustin Coleman right now. This up, God damn it. I can't even open it. Go Hester. Hackman's though for 18 yards down the field. He's so awesome. Except they wouldn't be so awesome if we played against them because we'd absolutely murder them. It'd be so awesome. And they call a timeout. Personally, we would never call timeouts. If you call a timeout, you are weak and inferior. And you do not deserve to have a football team. We go Lewis passes it out here. For first, Chris Ferguson with 12 yard catch. An awesome 12 yard catch. We gonna do here, bros. Just wide open. No defenders. They're all sitting down. They're all on their ass. They're not doing anything. That was the perfect opportunity for them, and they got a touchdown because of it. Inside run, another one though. Maybe Cataphracts might win this thing. Actually, seems like it is in favor of them here for this for this game. Oh, and a crowd to make some noise. Cataphracts, you know, playing home stadium tonight, so Ready, break. gotta get something Ready, done here. Set, hut, hut. Amaze. This is it to done. They call a timeout. Ready, I don't break. know where that thing went. Set, hut, hut. 
Battlefrags pass it here. Lawton, Lawton running this thing out. Defender blocked him. 40 yards placed in 58 here. 60 yard run right now. God damn, this has been a massacre so far. Not even a massacre, this is pretty much a one sided game. They get the kick successfully. They do, though, thanks to this MF Willie McDaniel. Willie McDaniel? They go into halftime now. Cataphrax will take the lead here 16 to 9. Loaded diapers have completely fell off as a team now. They got overconfident, which was which has now led to their downfall. They're going for the run here, unsuccessful though. I believe Willie McDaniel had something to do with this. Ready, think about it. Going long here. Great catch by Lawton. For 36 yards. Be so cool. Be so quirky. Here we go. Hank Mays. Another pass out to the field. This time he caught it. He got near the end zone. It might be good enough for first down. It most definitely is. First and goal. They're literally right there. There is no way for them to not score a touchdown. They do worst team in DFL history. But that's yep, see, just like that. Derek Langford, wide open, literally just a simple toss to him for a touchdown. Here we go. Kick down the middle of the field, and this thing's tied for the third quarter. We have now become an ASR football channel. No. What are you doing? Are you? Do you have like a metal fork? What is this? <laughs> Here we go. What Bobby is it? Lewis, Chris Ferguson. Tell me what the it is. The ultimate throw for twelve. The audience to the side. Leave your comments in the chat. Leave your comments below to Dustin guess Coleman. what speed now was using. Now Dustin Coleman doing his thing once again. Wide open for 62. He got first down though. Didn't get a touchdown just yet, but that would have been a good way to, to get up there. Now they're at the well, one yard line. There was no way in Christ for them to mess this up. Dustin Coleman, Jesus Christ, this man is a star right now. I gotta draft Dustin Coleman next time. This man is good on the field. Go. Lamont Little, I believe, is his name, but he got the kick and it's good. What are you doing? Only got 19 yards for that one. So bad. Ready, break. This is a moment. Here we go. Oh my God, bro! Did not even get a single yard. As soon as he got the ball, he got dropped. No hesitation at all. Loaded diapers. They gotta get a touchdown here at some point if they want to at least win the game right now. Definitely still in this though. Long pass here out to. Lawton, 27 yards, and they call a timeout. They have two of them left, though. Going to play a long pass here. Deflected or incomplete, whichever one it is. Because of Darren Stratton. Hank Mays out long pass to Barry Dunn for 44, 46. And they do another timeout because of it. Ready, Ready, got a minute and six left. They got to get a touchdown here. 
at least have a chance of winning. There we go. Great pass into the touchdown by Derek Langford. Ready, set up for the extra point. Go for the kick at least to tie this thing. And the kick is good. The game will be tied now with a minute and with a minute left here. Cataphracts, they got a minute if they want to win this game or at least maybe go for a field goal to win. It's definitely a high possibility, a high scoring game between these two teams. Keep them there. Didn't get much done. The 24. 380. Working hard or hardly working. The 322 true. I don't know what you said. Bobby Lewis. The Jay Hester. Jay Hester here. That is like the James most. Hester. And that is the most. And this is yes. See, Bob doesn't finish the sentence because he forgets what it says. Mm -hmm. There we go. Bobby Lewis out on the field. Wide open for Sean Whitfield. They get 30 yards at the 20. What are these super like southern sounding names? They're all from the south, that's why. Right. Because they're all from oh, Dallas, so. that's why. <clears throat> we go Bobby Lewis. Jay Hester. Oh, and it was close Jay there. Hester. James Hester, actually. Jay Hester is another player from another team. Jay Hester's brother. Exactly. They're just going to play for the same team. The Cataphracts, they could just waste as much time here, so the Gold Diapers have, like, none for them, and they play, and, of course, that's going to be a touchdown for Sean Whitfield. And it looks like Cataphracts will be winning the game here. They're going to set up the kick just for good measure. There it is, right down the field. Now, if the loaded diapers, if they can get a touchdown in this 13 seconds left, it's definitely possible. I think they might. Honestly, I think they might. That's insane. Who knows at this point, honestly. Stand up, Dallas. St sit your ass up, Dallas. Y'all sleep for, mm. the, for, the, for the Cowboys games. Ready, six fight. seconds left on the clock. Last play. I think they might have a chance. I don't know how I'm dumb. Game Siri. I very much doubt it. Hank Mays. Going long here, throwing a Hail Mary, and now Derek Langford, of course, could not get close enough. Close enough. And why do I hear myself echoing? And this thing's gonna end now with the Dallas Cataphracts actually getting a win tonight against the Loaded no Divers. Way. 30 no to way. 23. Here we go, coming up next, a game between two division leaders, a game between two teams. And why did my music stop all of a sudden? Okay, there we go. I fixed it. St. John St. Danish Lego men. Five and one record between one of these between both of these teams. Actually, one of them will be six and two. Joining or actually no, six and one joining the Fem Boys at the top. The other will be five and two. Let's see how this game will turn out. And apparently it's snowing in Canada. This is completely unfair for the Lego men, but then again I think it snows for them as well. I don't know. Yeah, it probably snows worse in there. No, no, no. I don't know. But this is Price, definitely a home Price field advantage. Like this the is same. definitely a home field advantage for like in most of Canada. St. John Saints. Quarterback Ray Hutton. Let me shout his name for a play. We got a Sullivan, the tight end. We actually got um him far from the uh, like on it, so. What? We got Tim Far from the Lego Man. For real, no way. Holy Jesus. He's playing for his former team, even though this, he's never played for them a day in their life. <laughs> yeah, he's just. He was just preset there. He, he was signed by them, but got drafted. Just one of the effects of the DFL draft. Oh, this is it here. BJ Tucker. BJ Tucker here. Oh my god. Oh. Got tackled by a guy who fell asleep. He's got taking back a up snooze. and he just did his thing and tackled him. The guy was just snoozing and then he either realized he had to do his, you know, oh god, I'm job. Snoozing. McClendon, oh my god, they cannot These guys get are, a they're damn really touchdown. Trying. They're they really trying. They can't get a single touchdown, bro. You're like right there. There's no way. You're at the third. You're Ray Hutton. That's the, oh my god. They're really trying. They don't want us getting scores. I mean, of course they wouldn't. Here we go. 
If, if the goddamn Saints can't make it here, this is going to be a turnover. Insider. <laughs> oh, my God. They were at the one-yard line for, Not like, a good start. four downs, and they couldn't even get it there. Now, if they tackle him here at the end zone, it will be a safety. Oh, my God. He got him. And I think that's the first safety of the DFL this season. Ryan Antwine got a point for the Saints. Bruh. We got we got a lot of um. You already made history tonight. DFL. We already made history last season. Well, first tied game in DFL history. We don't talk about the darkies on Barnacles overtime game. That thing was like ten minutes. These guys. They overtime. They do they? Yes, they overtime for like 10, 20 minutes. Oh my None god. None of them wanted a score apparently. There you go. Pass here to Tim Farr. Now Tim Farr running that out here. Showing Doing his off thing. In front of his former team that really wanted him, but he left them. For 45 yards. And maybe them losing Tim Farr was a bad idea. Doing yeah, they insane. probably would have been doing a lot better if they had him. Saints have definitely had more offense. Probably my best team. decision just ever in the DFL. They run for the pass, though, and it is complete. Jerome Bennett with an 18 yard catch for the touchdown. And already it seems like the Saints are having a better season compared to the last time. If they win tonight, of course. Short pass, try to go for a two, but got stopped by Michael Crosby. And now it will be the Danish Lego men who get the ball. They had it earlier, but of course they got a safety from it. Defense tonight is just top far. Top far. The Lego men's offense, who knows? They've definitely played some good offense throughout the last few weeks. Good pass here to Nick to Greg Miles. Greg Miles gonna run some miles here. Instead he ran 40 yards. Two ATTs, whatever that means. We've got two ATT surfaces. Here we go. There it goes. Sullivan passes out. Did not pass out. He gave it to Scott Jennings. Good throw. 15 yard catch. Ready, break. Here we go. There it goes. Sullivan. Going for a run instead. Not going for an inside one. Defenders nowhere oh, in sight. And the quarterback gets a touchdown. They did not expect this man to just take matters into his own hands and run it. Ready, break. That's the type of situation they need here. Now maybe they're they look like they're not too worried about, you know, trying to tie this thing. They're gonna keep it safe. They're gonna go for the kick. Technically they would be leading right now if it wasn't for the safety that that they had earlier. Saints just gonna let this thing go out. Not even gonna bother. They will be at the 25 regardless. Over Hutton. Out here and got tackled. Second and in inches. Second and in inches. Ready, break. Ready. Hut, hut. Here we go, passing another inside run. Didn't be very good there, but Team Far got 11 yards. As we head it into halftime here as the St. John Saints and the Danish Lego men are pretty tied but Saints obviously taking the lead here thanks to that safety if not this thing would be 6-7 to seven. so it's pretty much still anyone's game from the looks of it Lego men have the ball first so it could be for them Sullivan into to Miles here and now Greg Miles running out here 30, 40, 50 yards out on the field it seems. Close to 50. Great stats there. I don't know what they mean, but they're great. Cross his flakes. Oh my god, Greg Miles running this thing. No. Oh touchdown. I looked away for like two seconds and this man scored. Greg Miles is fast. Can he get the kick? Those kneecaps seem to be working because he got it. He got it good. You know he's not the one kicking. 
And the St. John Saints are in shambles now because of that play. Now running it, Tim Farr receiving it here. Returned for 22. Ready, break. Down. Set. Hutton. Out long pass to Chevin Sullivan, it seems. 77 yards in total for this game. At the near the 50. Well, luckily, there's not as much snow as the Economist game was, but now it seems like Tim Farr gonna do his thing once again. Defenders try to get him. They were not fast enough. Actual skill issue. 46 yard run for a touchdown. I don't know how the St. John Saints magically got good. Go for the kick. And now they will take the lead once again by one point. Now St. St. John Saints winning so far. Obviously the Danish Lego men. Now they're starting to realize the situation at hand. You gotta realize they gotta actually play good here. You stop underestimating the goddamn Saints. Oh, Sullivan. Nice here to Simpson. Or Dead. at the 50. Dead. Simpson? LeBron Simpson? No, Brian Griffin tackled the guy earlier. That was awesome. LeBron LeBron Simpson? No. Who cares LeBron about LeBron Simpson? Simpson? We care about Brian Griffin from the Wonka Takas and now Greg Miles running. For 23. We're at the fourth quarter now, Jesus Christ. Anyone's game right now, but it seems like it'll be more in favor of the Lego men. Inside run, not a first down. But he got second and two. Ready, a lot of a lot of stress, a lot of nerves in this rookie team right now. They prove themselves against the Saints. He got into the first down though, thanks to thanks to his coverage there by the players. Ready, break. 164 yards rushing total so far, 20 on average. Nice to get to Greg Miles. Greg Miles, though, targeting the leg specifically. Bro is trying to decapitate him. Jesus. I don't think you decapitate a person by their legs. If you paralyze it and injure it enough, yeah. Oh, Sullivan out long pass. Oh. A touchdown, McGrady. Maybe it seems like the McGrady. goddamn the McGrady's, yeah. It seems like the Lego men will win here tonight. All they gotta do is just stall time here. Inside run, unsuccessful though. All we have to do is get a touchdown and we win. Yeah, anything that the, any touchdown the Saints do will, will, will win the game for them, but they have a minute and 12 to do so. Not too much, but we the, manageable. They with the Danish Lego men earlier. They have Danish in their names. I mean, they have Danish. Canadian. Here we go. 108 yards rushing total for the Saints tonight. Oh my god, and immediately got sacked. This is where the Lego men are going to be playing some very strong defense. This is where they've got to hold the fort down. Making sure that the Saints do not receive any yards. They are second and 19. This one, you got to throw it long. And so, oh, but it might have been deflected. Rashawn McLean made them lose some yards there. At the third here. They got 19 yards they got to get to for the first down. Go Ray Hutton going long here. This time it was first down. But I believe they might have stalled the time enough for them to not get very far here. Tim Farr. We go Ray Hutton. Got to come up with a master plan, a master strategy. And they call that for is... another timeout with 30 seconds left. St. John Saints, the pressure's on them right now. Lego men playing hell of a defense right now. Ray Hutton, think about going long here. Another tackle though. For 10 yards. 20, 10 seconds was lost there. 
And they lost some more though. Now they're at 13 seconds. Saints are just shivering from this weather and this nervousness right now into the tackle. Deflected by Brad White. Three seconds left in the game. St. John Saints need to get a touchdown here to win. But they're too far out to do so. Can they do it for this play? Ray Hutton going for it. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Jamal Taylor made sure that did not happen. And the Danish Lego men are going to take the win here tonight against the St. John Saints. 20 to 15. Here we go, coming up next, one of the greatest games, one of the most influential games of the DFL this season, the Pickle Lake Regards, who have a record, what is it, like, one to, like, seven? They have a record, they certainly do. They apparently, yeah, they have one of the records in DFL history, one and five against the Ball Lickers, with three and three. Five? Who did they win against? And they're playing in the goddamn... Pickle Lake Stadium or whatever this place is called. Where it's always raining pickles. Hmm. No, actually, no, it's pickle juice. It's the, uh... Ooh, some yeah. juice. Or 20 oh my yards God. there. Ready, oh my lord. I can't wait to do so much commentary for this game. <laughs> this game is really important. Sure, for, uh, something. Right I don't know what it is yet, but it's... I will only commentate when they do the important parts. AC Van Dyke, they defense is just not it tonight. You really gonna let the team called the Pickle Lake Regards beat y'all? Come on. Alright, I'm gonna go now. Come on. Can't be doing this.
Oh my goodness gracious, I'll look away for a couple of seconds of the pickle like regards might actually beat the ball lickers right now. What the hell? And they call a timeout. Oh my god. This thing got intense now. Obviously, regards were winning earlier. Now ball lickers managed to tie the game here. And now, oh my god though, Conrad Harris catches it. Pickle like regards look to win the game. And they set up for the extra point. Can they do it? And the kick is good. Ball Lickers got a minute and 17 left to get something done here. Is it gonna be possible? Probably not, let's be honest. We go Lawrence Glass here. Lawrence Glass gotta carry the Ball Lickers right now. Ball Lickers been struggling throughout this game. How do you struggle with the goddamn Pickle Lake Regard? The Pickle Lake Regards we're talking about. 204 yards in total for this team here in this game. Going long here. Great pass here to Rich Richie Wiggins. And they call a timeout. Things are not looking good here. They got a minute left. No pressure whatsoever. Going for the pass. Into the tackle. For first down and they call a timeout. Oh my, oh my goodness, oh my damn. Here Wallace running here in the middle to Jaquez Little and they call a timeout with only an eight yard pass. Who knows at this rate. Wallace now gonna go for another pass to Richie Wiggins. Richie Wiggins to win the game or at least tie it here. For the ball lickers. Here we go, extra point. They get the kick here, they will head into overtime. And they manage to do so. Ball lickers, three guards, 21 to 21 here. And honestly, maybe with the 30 seconds they have left, they might be able to get a touchdown, but I very much doubt it. Close game here. Fourth pass. And now, oh my god, couldn't get it. Call timeout. He knows at this rate. Three guards. There's one timeout left in their disposal. 26 seconds left. They gotta be careful with these plays. Pass it to Robert Long. Robert Long going long as well for 27. And they call for the timeout with 13 seconds left on the clock. At this point is when you need to throw a Hail Mary. Ball lickers don't have any timeouts either. Three guards wasted theirs. Final seconds of the game. Anderson passes it out to Hardy, gets tackled for four. And I believe this one will be the last play of the game, unless we go to overtime. And at this point, that might be the safer bet for these two teams. Anderson going for the short pass gets tackled as we head into overtime between the regards and the ball lickers. They're set up for the kick. Can they do it? Can they win the game? Oh, and they managed to do so. The pick a leg regards win the game here tonight. Ball lickers are the actual worst team in the DFL. Jesus Christ. Overtime win. 24 to 21 for the regards. And here we go. Coming up next, we've got a Super Bowl rematch between the Louisiana Chicken Sandwich, formerly the Hell Hamburgers, against the Greenville Crowd here tonight. You know the last time these two played, Crowd absolutely destroyed them in the Super Bowl. And tonight, let's see how this one's going to turn out in the Super Bowl rematch. They go bright and sunny here in the Popeyes chicken sandwich stadium thing here. I don't know what they call it. There we go, and it seems like Peter Gill or Percy Gill will be getting the ball here for the chicken sandwich team. Ready, break. 
was an interesting game last season from the Super Bowl. Well, going for a short pass here in the middle. Run in here, and he got absolutely tackled.
I look away for a few seconds and the goddamn season two Super Bowl champions are losing to the goddamn chicken sandwich team. How is this possible? Bruh. What, what happened to them dominating them last season? What is this? Clyde Ellis has really just fumbled the team and now apparently ever since I said that they got a touchdown. Very awesome. But still, this does not excuse the fact that this was just an embarrassing performance. They need to get a two-point conversion here just to tie the game. Can they do it, though? And they do. Marquise Copeland ties the game. That begs the question, though. They got 52 seconds left. Chicken Sandwich are most definitely going to beat the Super Bowl champions who are still on a hangover. They've not let go that they won, and that will be their entire personality going forward. Like Jesus Christ. It's 22 to 22. Chicken sandwich gets sacked here. Jonathan Bennett with eight yard loss there. Unless they manage to get a safety like the St. John Saints did earlier. Here we go. Jeremy Spielman almost got sacked there, but this time he does. And they call for a timeout 38 seconds. Honestly. 
You can just run this time. You can just do this to go as long as possible. Maybe that's what these two teams will end up doing. Gonna go chicken sandwich. Going for the pass here. Interception, though. Great catch. Jeremy Spielman just like that. Probably costed his team the win. And now the Greenville Growl look to get back in the, in the move of things here. Maybe getting back to their winning ways. Going for a short pass here. Been successful at that, but second and short. Oh my lord. That would have been an embarrassing if they lost to the Louisiana Chicken Sandwich for like one and five. Clearly, maybe they're not trying because it's not the Super Bowl anymore. Great pass into the tackle. Oliver Dorsey with 13 seconds left. And now Greenville Growler pretty much guaranteed the win here. Final play of the game. Can the Growl do it? Unless we go to overtime. Short pass here and just like that touchdown, Marquise Copeland wins it for the Greenville Growl. They finally get a win here tonight. It's been a while since they got one, but they get one here. There you go, Ellis. There you go for an inside run, but instead did not matter. They still won the game. Obviously a repeat from the Super Bowl, except this time the chicken sandwich team definitely got a lot more dominance compared to last time. It is the Greenville Growl with 28, the chicken sandwich 22. Here we go, coming up next for our last game of the night, the Detroit Yorkies battling the Naples Nanachis here in this game. Surprisingly, the Nanachis have definitely picked up some wins. There is a team that we really expect to get to go high up into the rankings, but they have. And they take on the Yorkies who are really a free who will win this game. Let's find out. And what the hell happened to the sky here tonight? Holy Jesus. It's so cloudy, I can't even see a thing.
Oh my god, I'm back. And it seems like from fourth down, Fred Rhodes is in trouble. He's got to get a goddamn first down, and he does, though. Minachis and goddamn darkies. I don't know how the hell this thing's tied. But it is, apparently. The darkies got to win this game. They need to humiliate the Minachis. Fred Rhodes out into the touchdown. Takes the George Walker for an 11-yard catch. As they set up for the extra point. Going for the kick this time. Luckily, they're not spending hours for the goddamn overtime unless they run game with the barnacles. And now they set up for the kick. They're going brown. And now Wolford gets planted. 30 seconds left on the clock. Manachis. We need to get a touchdown here in the last plays of the game. They want to at least head to overtime. Derek Knight. Going long here in the middle. They lost 10 seconds there. They got to keep up the, they got to keep up this pace here. Call for a timeout. Now none of them have timeouts. So the clock will just run from here on out. One of the last plays for the Nanachis. Going for a short pass here. Interception though by Robinson and Derek Knight just like that got an epic fail and the darkies with 12 seconds left to at least get another touchdown but what they have so far they could just stall the time and they'd be perfectly fine with it Michael Solomon with a 12 yard run one turnover in this game as they set up for a 35 yard kick Oh, wait, they got blocked, though, by Derek Wright. But it does not matter because the Darkies win here tonight against the Naples Nanachis 21-14. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and have a good night.